Welcome to the couple of people that have arrived already. I'm just prepping the yard. I've got a few inspections to do today. I'm also going to transfer some bees from one of my Langstroth hives into my top bar hive. It's pretty early in the morning. I think it's about 7.30 a.m. The bees are still asleep. Very, very quiet down here. But yes, I'm going to transfer my bees from one of my hives into my top bar hive today. So there'll be a video coming out probably in the next couple of days about that. But yeah, very, very quiet down here. A few roos on the road on the way through. <coughs> Got to keep an eye out for snakes this time of year. So this hive here, that's the Well Rescue Hive, if you guys have seen that video. And what I did with this one is about four weeks ago, I put some top bars in it. So I'd expect that by today, those top bars are relatively full of comb and should be easy enough to transfer over into the top bar hive. There'll be a bit of cutting, you know, there'll be a square frame and I'll probably have to cut them on a bit of an angle. I've got the... Uh, the board that goes in the end board of the top bar hive as a bit of a template over here. So I'll use that as a template to cut the comb. Smoker's lit. Tried some of the grass, didn't fare very well. Just went with the old Hessian. <coughs> if any of you beekeepers out there managed to get your hold, get hold of this type of Hessian, grab onto it because it's pretty thick. Like it's probably four millimetres thick, which is, what's that, like two eighths of an inch. And it's old, like this stuff's, I don't know what it is, maybe carpet underlay or something, but it burns like nothing else. I lit the smoker about an hour ago and it's just been sitting here. And I can feel the heat on my hand from it. So bushfire season down in the Australian bush, or at least in Victoria as well, so you've got to have 20 litres of water on you, just in case a fire breaks out. You can probably hear that kookaburra in the background. I was speaking with the landowner a couple of weeks ago, and I told him about these tracks I don't know if you guys can see the tracks there, you know, so there's one here and one there and there's some grass that's been pushed down in the centre of the frame. Oh, no, I don't think it's going to be a hot day. I think it's going to be about 23 Celsius, so about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. But I've got a big job to do. I don't know how I'm going to go with this top bar swap over and I've got to take a couple of nukes back into town and install them in two beehives so it's going to take some time but so you can see here that patch that's where the wild boar wild pigs have been running in and mucking around here so it's a pretty wild place down in Kawarin. i hope the data's all right guys i hope it's not too glitchy i'm a bit dubious about doing these lives because they always end up low quality. I'd rather give you high quality than low quality. If anyone's interested in the setup that I use, I just use a GoPro, GoPro 10. I've got an external battery. This will basically go all day. The GoPro batteries are pretty crap. I've got a bit of tape on the end of here and the reason I do that is because you've got to take the door off to charge. So I take the door off and take the battery in. But yeah, yell out if there's anything you want me to show you just while I'm down here. I won't be opening up the bees in this video, but I'll certainly be opening them up soon. 
what would you like to see? Anyone would like to see the front of a hive? We'll check out the white hive. I don't know if you saw the videos, but the white hive here, two weeks ago I came down. Yeah, pine needles are awesome. That's what I love about Christmas ant is that you end up with, well, we use, you know, real trees. So I end up with a trail load full of pine needles, but uh, I'm still going on my hessian. So this white hive, two weeks ago I came down, pretty ugly sort of a inspection, ended up having three queen cells in the top box. They were a bit weird looking. Have a look, that was our last video. They were a bit odd looking. And so I just went with the rule of if you find queen cells, you've got to rip the queen out fake a swarm. So I faked a swarm. I took about four frames. Yeah, I think four frames out of that white hive. And now the white hive queen is in this hive here. So we've got the white hive bookending both of our, well, all of our apiary. <coughs> so no doubt, no doubt this will take off. That little bee doing up there, he's caught, caught in a cobweb. Yeah, so no doubt this hive here will take off. That's the well rescue hive. This one here is, I've really made, I've made a couple of boo-boos. I had them all marked quite clearly which colour they are and I've been swapping over lids and I don't know what's going on anymore. So this one's a blue hive. They're doing quite well. That was, a, I rescued them about maybe nine weeks ago. They were queenless. I amalgamated two hives, turned them into one, put a box on four weeks ago. Pink hive, I think they were doing pretty good. Oh, that's good, Anth. I'm pleased about that. So, yeah, this is the purple hive. Purple hive and the pink hive were both splits that I did off the white hive. This one here is the red hive. This has got a queen from John Edmonds here in Geelong. Seems to be going pretty well. These bees are real quiet at the moment. I don't know if you can see in there, you probably can't. But see how much space there is between the frames and the bottom of the box. When we go over to the white hive, you'll be able to see, see how the bottom of the frames uh, right on the bottom of the box. And I wonder if that's the sort of thing that contributes to them being so strong. Maybe they've got a little bit more room that they can uh, protect with. A little bit more of a barrier, I should say. But yeah, so white hive. <clears throat> we've got the green hive, which is the split from the white hive. Then we've got the orange hive. These are Italians in here. They've been going really, really well. I really like the Italians. This one here is, drum roll, which one's this one? Oh, this is the grey hive. So the grey hive is doing pretty well. Looks like they've got a few mummies at the front there. Maybe a little bit of chalk brood. All these hives were pretty weak, you know, six, eight weeks ago. So 10 weeks ago, maybe nine weeks ago, I stripped off all the boxes. You know, it was really quite a dire situation and now it's actually come good. So this one here is the black hive. Black hive's got a lot of boxes on it. It must have been doing right. I think from memory, last time I came down here, these guys had started filling up one of their boxes, maybe this one here, and their brood was going quite well. So I threw another box on just as a security measure. <coughs> And I'm just looking at this now, so I think the yellow hive was either the yellow hive or maybe the single over here, the green hive. I think they were doing quite badly. I think it was the green hive that was suffering a little bit. So that'll be interesting to get into those guys today. But yeah, super quiet. You can probably hear that clicking in the background. That's the frogs waking up in the dam. Yeah, I've thought about, I've seen um, Ian Stepler uses a 
labeling system on his you know they're like about 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters piece of <coughs> polycarbonate and you mark them with pushing th thumbtacks so you can say when you requeened it what sort of brew what the brew was like and all those sort of things and you tack them on the side of the box anth but I got a price from a company to do them and they wanted about six bucks each just to do them and you know as a venture, it's not very good pricing. You'd probably have to buy 7,000 of them. But yeah, the cattle tags are probably good. Just the ear tags, is it you use? So yeah, yellow hive, that one's probably a little bit weak as well, but the red hive seems to always be going quite well. This hive here, if you guys have seen it, it's got the double frame divider. So the frame, instead of being a complete rectangle all with comb it's actually got a piece of timber going between so it's got two sections of comb in each one of these frames not in the whole hive there's about two or three of them in there but they're just interesting to see and this one here must be oh yeah this is the purple hive i've swapped a few boxes over this hive was obviously once upon a time on the orange hive i know it looks pink yeah i'll show you the nukes Here's all the stuff that I've got to bring when I come down here. Basically got two boxes full of frames, some insulation. I'm going to put that on the top bar hive, a couple of nukes, a few bits and pieces. I had to make an adjustment to the lid of the top bar hive. It was, for some reason, I think the timber might have swelled up a little bit. It wasn't actually the lid wouldn't go on, it was hitting the bars, so I had to move the bars out, so I bought a few tools down. So here we are, this is the little bit of a nuke yard. It's just behind the other one, so these run parallel to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. So these nukes are really, really quiet. These first two here are suffering a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they both need some brood. But these five are going really, really well. It might not look like it if I give them a kick. They woke up, but they didn't come out. They're in there, I can hear them. Yeah, so this one on the six was queen right with a new queen. This one, the sixth, had an Italian queen. I might have to look into that, Anth. This one on the sixth had a queen cell. This one was queen right. So they're doing pretty good. It's a pretty nice place to beekeep. This one here is a little three frame split that I took. I built this box for four frames, but sometimes stupidity prevails I uh I put the four frames in it and left it for a while with some bees in it and the frames swelled up a little bit a little bit of propolis the box shrunk a little bit and it was impossible to keep using it as a four framer so I made it a three framer here's the top bar hive that I built there's a video on that if you guys want to check it out this hasn't got any bees in it at the moment the painting's pretty ordinary on this, so I just gave it a quick three or four quotes of uh, enamel just before I brought it down. I'll let you have a look inside. So inside it's all brand new timbers. There's a spare bar in there. I really love top bar beekeeping. It's really, really natural. 
I find that the bees are healthier. I find they're more productive. A few years ago, I had, what did I have? Two top bar hives. I had a nuke and a big hive, and it was 22 frames of brood at one point. And I think because it was so strong in the winter, it came out of winter with American fowl brood. So in suburbia, in Geelong, there seems to be a lot of people that have bees but don't actually manage them. And through that comes some disease transmission. So I got a bit of American fowl brood. And as per the Department of Primary Industries legislation, you have to test, then you have to close the hives up at night while they're all in there. You have to notify the Department of Primary Industries <coughs> and then you have to fill them with petrol to kill them and then you've got to burn them all on site. So that was a, what was that? That was probably an education in beekeeping for me. You know, disease control is pretty important. That's one of the reasons why I came down here. The nearest beekeeper... Look, there's one probably a kilometre away, but he's only got one hive and the rest of the beekeepers around here, you know, they're three, four kilometres away. So even if there was disease down here, it would be very, very difficult to transmit it. But yeah, anything you guys want to see while I'm on this live, I'm not going to make it too long. I've got to get into these guys. I'm just waiting for them to wake up a bit. Shout out if there's anything you want to see. Oh, that sounds like a great way to do it, Anth. I'm going to check that out. Does it mean you have to have 100 hives, though? Question mark. <sighs> anyway, look, guys, I might end this off. I'm going to get into this hive. It's starting to warm up. It's probably 14 or 15 degrees now. Still a little bit cool, but I actually want to keep some of the bees in the hive before I transfer them over to the top bar hive. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your comments. Keep an eye out. And thanks for all the subscribers. There's been a lot of subscribers over the last two weeks with our latest video. That thing has pretty much gone off. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it's a bit of a fluke. But yeah, so thanks to everyone who's subscribed. Love all the comments. Love all the likes. See you on the next one, guys. Oh, hey, Steve. How you going, mate? Good to see you. Hopefully you haven't had to go back to full-time work. Hopefully your lavender's taken off, mate. I can only imagine you guys have had an enormous amount of uh, cold weather up that way. If you guys get a chance, check out Ozarks Homestead and Farm. They're in the Ozarks in Central America, I think. Alright guys, speak to you soon.